Hi, this is Kat Sturtz from RockingYourPath.com with another episode of Fast Action Fridays. And today, my guest is Jennifer Monahan from Charlotte, North Carolina. And we're going to be talking about home business bookkeeping. And Jennifer is going to add the part about making that simple for us, uh, which I absolutely love because I know from my own life and from working with a lot of clients, um, sometimes we think things are more difficult than they are or will take more time than they actually do. And it's usually because we make things harder than they need to be. So Jennifer, welcome to the show today. And could you tell everybody a little bit about your background? Hi, Kat. Thank you for having me on your show. It's wonderful to be here. Well, my background is primarily in bookkeeping, and I've been interested in bookkeeping since I was a teenager. I found that I was creating my own little ledgers with my small allowance and babysitting money, and I loved to track it. And so it was a natural for me to go in, into college as actually an accounting major. And I wasn't all that excited about sitting behind a desk my entire life. So I generalized it to business administration, which included accounting. And I found myself working for the Postal Service and naturally taking the daily bookkeeper's job at the end of the day. And from there, I, after well, 16 years in the Postal Service, I was ready to make a change. And I found that I could be a private bookkeeper through the community that I was selling stamps for. It was a natural segue to quit the post office and become a, a private bookkeeper. That, is, that was fascinating, going to people's homes, All right. seeing their, their books. Now, one of the things that I learned about you when a mutual friend acquaintance introduced us was that you had done, uh, written a book that's available on a couple places, Amazon being one of them, called An American in Oz, Discovering the Island Continent of Australia. What I found fascinating in terms of the topic we're discussing today is how much your interest in bookkeeping and your interest in passion you know, following your passion kind of merged and led to this adventure. Can you talk about that just a little bit? Yes, I I did have a a wandering lust that I wanted to be able to travel more. And I was getting one month off a year with the Postal Service, but that that wasn't enough. So when I left the Postal Service, I, I saved my money, and in less than a year and a half, I saved enough to go to Australia for a month, and, or for two months, actually. And I went in December 2000 to celebrate the millennium. And one of the stops along the way through Australia was the son of one of my bookkeeping clients. And so that made it even more interesting to be able to meet her son and see where he was living. Oh, that's awesome. And I know we're going to come back to the book uh, later in this interview, but right now, let's get to the topic at hand. Home business bookkeeping made simple. Now you have some key points for us to remember and a few tips. So let's start with the with the key points, what should we remember as home-based business owners to make sure our bookkeeping gets done and to make it easy on ourselves to actually do it? Well, bookkeeping is essential. Finances are a huge part of our life. And the, the key point is, is to understand that finances require organ, an organization. We need to know what's coming in and what's going out. And without that knowledge, it's too confusing and that causes problems so number one is just realize it's it, we're just organizing the digits on the page mm-hmm. and money and no go ahead i love that phrase okay. you have digits on the page <laughs> and yeah one it was fairly recently that i realized that it's especially since we're going less and less cash you know there's we see the armored trucks on the on the on the street but they can't possibly move, be moving all the money that's flying around, you know, from uh, one bank to another and with all the purchases that we make. And so I realized that some people have more digits on the page than others. Money is truly is neutral, and it's what we put the meaning into it that can create problems for us. So by looking at it as digits on a page, then we're just organizing those. We're watching how much comes comes in and how much goes out right the the third point is to remember to keep it super simple that's my kiss k k-i-s-s keep Uh it 
super simple. And you know, there's no you don't need a computer program. I don't even use QuickBooks. I've managed people's money from earning forty thousand a year to being millionaires, and I've never used QuickBooks. I do everything by hand, and they're they're completely happy with that. It really is easy to keep it simple. Right, and it's not because you couldn't use it. It's like you said. You're keeping it easy, and for a lot of your clients, because you do it an easy way, they can grasp it, and they quit being afraid of it, uh, or afraid that they won't understand what they're doing, right? Or what you're putting together right. for them. Exactly, and I was able to tailor it exactly to what they could see and understand, and, and unique to their situation. Like some, some had stock investments, some had real estate investments, some... It was just as simple as paying their bills, but they wanted to know how much was, you know, was coming in and going out. It's fascinating to see it on, on a simple piece of paper or maybe four or five pages. Something only has the information that pertains to them. And we don't have all these pages of blank pages of things that don't need to be there, like might be in a QuickBooks report. Right. And all of the information that you're collecting, helping them collect or that we need to collect for ourselves, doesn't that lead us to making decisions about our businesses easier and less yeah. fearful? Right, right. And it's, and when you see the numbers don't lie, the numbers are very objective. They just tell you what is. So it's that way you can see how much am I spending in eating out or how much am I spending on shoes or how much am I spending on uh Advertising that's not working, you know, there's a lot of areas that it's amazing what happens when we add the numbers up and actually see what's going out. And then you can make an educated choice after mm -hmm. seeing what the actual numbers are. All right. Now, what are your other key points about bookkeeping that or in money that we should keep in mind? Well, the, the first point and what I consider one of the most important is to take inspired action. We all get the whisper of, oh, I should balance my checkbook or I should look at my bank balance. Or if you get a whisper. It's that little voice. You know, it's that it's really, it really comes in like just an idea, a thought that you have. But if you, if you take inspired action on those little whispers, they'll lead you to answers about what you, where your finances are. And so many of us ignore those whispers. We ignore looking at it because procrastination is so easy. And, but those are the whispers that are really trying to help us out. Uh -huh. They do help us out. And that's, that's another phrase that you use that I really like because it was that whisper that you heard and you kind of ignored it for a while. I mean, you acknowledged you were getting it. Uh, in terms of not wanting to stay at the Postal Service forever. But you didn't really do anything about it. You didn't really take the inspired action that it was giving you right away. Am I right? Yes, that's true. Um, one of my favorite quotes is from, and I, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing her name right, and that's Nin. Uh, and, well, she said, And the day came when the risk to remain tight in the bud grew more painful than the risk that it took to blossom. Mm-hmm. And it was getting painful staying in the Postal Service. And the answer actually literally came to me. A woman came to me. I was selling stamps. I'm at the postal counter. And she says, do you know anyone who does bookkeeping? I really need some a personal bookkeeper. And I said, well, I'll think about it. And actually, as I was saying that, I said, that's me. I said, and within 30 seconds of the woman standing in front of me, I said, I, said, I can do that. And that was my little tiny leap of faith. And I, so I worked with her in addition to my full-time job. And I realized I can do this. I can make a career out of this. Wow. And a few months, a few months later, I was, I was gone. Right. Into my new life. And that didn't uh, eliminate all the fears you had about that, did it? Oh, not at all. I lost sleep. I journaled. <laughs> I wrote the pros and cons. I, uh, I read the book titled feel the fear and do it anyway mm -hmm. and every you know, everything i read gave me the signal i was doing the right thing yeah i love that book by susan jeffries it's on my i can see That's it on it. my shelf <laughs> <laughs> yes it's, it's a wonderful book yes all right so how do we if we haven't set up a bookkeeping system for ourselves or we have one that leaves us feeling frustrated or feeling overwhelmed because it's not as simple as we'd like it to be what are your tips for us to do that well the first one i call the folder method and that's for income 
I I went to Staples and I bought a very simple pocket folder, just one pocket on, on the left, one pocket on the right, and it has a picture of a koala. It's a, just a full picture of a koala, and it, so because I wanted to make it light and easy and fun, and and I put a little sticker on the top of the folder on the cover that says twenty. Right now it says twenty seventeen income, and every time I get any kind of pay, whether if somebody pays me cash for something, I'll write down on the piece of paper the, the day, how much, who gave it to me, and I'll put it in the folder because normally the cash goes right into my wallet, and depending on how much, it may go into the bank. But I, I, I keep track of dates and names and where the money comes from. And for my husband, um, who gets a, a pay stub, I just put his pay stub in there. And that's where it all goes. It's easy, it's quick, it's the folder method for income. Right, so literally minutes each time it happens. Right, right. And I keep it in a very easy, accessible place in my file cabinet, and as soon as I have that piece of paper in my hand, I, I pick up my folder and I put it in there, and it's there for when I want to really look at it further, but it's, it's okay. organized. I know where it is. Okay, and what's number two? Number two is called the envelope method, <laughs> and mm -hmm. this is for receipts. So anytime, I, I still get a paper receipt for everything. So we're now, when we buy something at a store, we sometimes get a choice to have the receipt emailed to us or no receipt at all, and I always ask for the printer receipt, and I put it in my wallet, and then, you know, I may get a few receipts building up in my wallet, and when I'm ready to clear out my wallet, I put it in this envelope. It's labeled 2017 receipts. And I don't start sorting at this point. I just put the receipt in the envelope. And I'm super frugal, frugal. So I use envelopes that I get in the mail. Let's say I get a auto insurance bill. And sometimes they come in, when you're renewing, they come in bigger envelopes. So right. I'll I'll use the back side, and I'll just write on the back side. So I've, I've rarely ever bought envelopes for this, this stage of the sorting. Right, and yeah. some I, I think he showed me that sometimes you use just a simple like number ten envelope, and then uh, sometimes you use the larger like a Manila uh, letter size envelope. Exactly. It depends how many receipts or how what the size of the receipts. Um, for gas receipts, I'll use a legal size envelope and just keep all my gas receipts in a legal size. And for the larger, like a auto repair, that always comes with bigger paper, so I would use a, a vanilla, a vanilla, a manila. <laughs> a manila envelope. All right, so number one, separate the expenses from the income, and then the expenses you can start categorizing as, right. as they start building up, right? Well, all the receipts go in, into the one general mm -hmm. envelope. That's, you know, the ones that la land on my desk and, you know, I just, I put it in a very general envelope. And then maybe once a month, sometimes I'll go a couple of months, I'll go in, I'll take that one envelope and then I'll sort them out and, you know, paper clip the gas receipts together, I'll paper clip the business, the um, office supplies together. And I'll start sorting and putting them in uh, in their individual envelopes. Right. So we're not having those types of paper, that type of paperwork laying here and there around our houses and our home businesses and in our wallets or left in the car. And then you time block basically the categorization. So you're really minimizing the total amount of time you're dealing with this. Right, and businesses are best looked at every quarter anyway, so every three months. I mean, we're already at the um, you know, middle of February, and you know the end of March is the first quarter of a year. So if you don't do it every month, you could at least do it every three months. Right. It depends how much activity there is in your business. And whether you yeah. here in the States, whether you have to file quarterly taxes or not, you're going to need that. Uh, quarterly summary. Exactly. All right. And I love how simple you keep 
the third tip, because we've talked about this, and <laughs> this is for those other things, and people are going, but she's got to get some digital <laughs> receipts sometimes, or I get digital receipts. What am I supposed to do? I don't want all this paperwork. What do you tell people what you do for tip number three? <laughs> it's so simple. Well, I, and... call... <laughs> yeah. I call it the payment card method, and I made it up for myself just for my own sanity because of because of the digital age and all these um, you know I don't get uh, electric paper electric bills anymore I've gone paperless as much as possible as far as that goes and because I do pay online so which I find interesting having worked in the postal service <laughs> I, you know I get my mail online I get my, <laughs> my bills online so I I made up a uh, I use stock paper I'll I'll use and here another frugal tip. I use recycled. If I have a a folder, just a a file folder that's getting a little too dog-eared, I will cut it into three strips. I will title each one, say auto insurance, and then I'll have the website that I go to, my username and password on each on on the card, and then I'll have January through December written written down. And every time I pay that monthly bill, I write the amount that I paid that month. Because sometimes it fluctuates a little bit, especially the electric bill. That's always different. Um, cell phone bill might fluctuate a little bit. Or cable bill fluctuates. Mm-hmm. So I have these cards, and it also helps remind me to pay them if I haven't got it set up on auto pay uh, for whatever reason. I, I will have the card to look at so I remember to pay it on time. Right. So it's a chronological record of these digital files. And if someone's just listening to us, I know that when you say you cut it into three strips and then you're using it vertically, so it's a a narrow but long strip that holds the whole year on one of the cardstock. Cardstock, for those who aren't familiar, is a thicker uh, type of paper as opposed to note paper or loose leaf uh, binder paper. We're talking something with a little bit more weight and stability to it. Right. It can handle a year's worth of handling. Yes. Entries. Yes, exactly. Do you recreate all of these three each year, like after you do your taxes, or do you reuse some of the envelopes and, well, you couldn't reuse the payment card uh, strips, but the folders and the envelopes. Do you use those from year to year, or do you file things away for that particular year, year using the same envelope or folder? But I'll keep those envelopes in with the tax year that I work them, and I'll and while I get my mail, I I think ahead and I think, okay, how many envelopes am I going to need, and what size? And so I I save enough envelopes to create in January and do the same thing. So this and is it's, it's very satisfying to especially with this the the payment card method with the card stock. I I actually really enjoy setting it up for the year. It's like a clean slate and I'm ready to go and it makes paying bills a lot easier and it's that whisper where I don't feel like doing it when I'm <laughs> starting. <laughs> and that's the thing I noticed about uh the psyche I can start something and not feel like doing it, but once I stay in the motion of doing it, next thing I know, I'm into it, and I'm, I'm, you know, an hour or two will go by, and and I find that I probably thought about doing it a lot longer than it actually takes to do it. Yes, um, great point. <laughs> that we waste a lot of time just thinking about doing it, or we think about it and talk about it so much, we kind of convince ourselves we've already done it when we really haven't taken care of it. Right. And, and we all have time. We all have time. And there's so many things that we can stop doing, like, you know, Facebook for one thing or, or watching a TV show. We all have, can find the time to do it. Well, and this is time we have to make for handling this. So either make it simple in a few minutes throughout the year or really screw up your days by having to, don't you know, Donate, donate, um, <laughs> having to schedule two, three, four, five days 
uh, full days of frustration, finding everything, sorting everything, recording everything, you know, uh, at the end of the year when you need to put your income tax records together. Right. And it's, and by filing those receipts right away, it's still fresh in your memory and you might remember, oh, there was another expense that went with that and I don't, I, I didn't write it down or, and it's all about writing it on a, just a scrap piece of paper. It's, just throw that information down, like the, a date, the time, what what it was. Sometimes I won't get a receipt at the gas station, and as a as a writer and a bookkeeper, I always have a pen and paper in my car, and I'll I'll write down the date, where I was, how much gas it was, and I'll throw it into my purse. And there, I have it. I've captured it. I don't have to try to try to remember it later. All right. Now, do you keep any kind of running list, a uh, summary list of income and expenses, like with a spreadsheet, whether it be a paper spreadsheet or an Excel or a Google Sheet spreadsheet? I have a spreadsheet for my income because I, I have several different sources of income, and it makes it easier. I love the autom- automatic sum button that I can set up my spreadsheet to automatically add up certain columns and... So when I put in a number, it automatically shows me what the total is so far for the month. And so I love using it, a spreadsheet, Excel spreadsheet for income. I still add everything up by hand with a calculator for everything else. Mm-hmm. Because I don't have a, a lot of expenses for all the various categories. And all my clients, they've, they've all been pretty simple too. So... It's that's all done by hand. Yeah, I love that. I'll do it. Excuse me. I love that you told me that you even use this simple method with some of your clients because they truly don't need anything more elaborate than what you're supplying. Right, and they love it too because it's it's so easy for them to see. It's just crystal clear and. (laughs) <laughs> less is more you know? less is absolutely more. all right so let's go back and put this in terms of your book and how you how doing something like this ended up helping you take this wonderful trip to australia i know part of your goal was to save money to spend it on things that you really really wanted to do and in order to do that, you needed a good handle on what money was coming in and what money was going out. And then you planned this trip with your boyfriend at the time, right? Right. All right. Just share a little bit about that. And for those listening, if you read Jennifer's book, An American in Oz, Discovering the Island Continent of Australia, you'll learn more background about her situation working with the Postal Service. And listening to that whisper, which is another phrase of yours that I just love, listening to that whisper. Um, So tell us a little bit more about how the trip to uh, Australia came about and a few highlights of what you learned. Well, we started to plan it uh, uh, five months before we left. My, My boyfriend said, I would love to go to Australia for the millennium. And he said, let's go for a month. And I thought, yes, I can do a month. And then he said, let's go for two months. And I said, well, I'll check with my clients and, and see. And that the wonderful thing about bookkeeping is it's just paper. And paper can wait. <laughs> and <laughs> so yeah, there, there were maybe a few things that required a little bit of attention. So I, um, I had a friend that was in a similar business, and she took care of those areas. And I... It was another leap of faith that I would still have a job when I came back after two months. So I had been saving my money all along. I lived very frugal, and it was easy to save money. So we we went with a, a budget of, it was $8,000. It turned out to be $8,000 a piece. And for two months, that was quite amazing, actually, because it's easy to spend that on. For, so $8,000 for each of you for the two months in Australia? Or, yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah, we split everything 50-50. Okay. And the only reservation or plan that we made before we left the States was we bought a train ticket to take us from the east coast of Australia to the west coast. And we had three major points that we, w- we wanted to see, the the sun of 
one of my clients was one of them. And we really didn't know how we were going to get from point A to point B other than the tr taking the train. Australia is the size of the continental United States. Mm -hmm. So it was, if I had really stopped to think about it, I probably would have been too overwhelmed to even leave the, leave the house. But it's, it was a, a leap of faith and I called it the, the no plan plan. Actually, one of the first times I truly learned to live in the moment and trust the adventure to unfold right in front of me. And that's exactly what happened. And you planned to be frugal the whole time you were there because that had been now as a, maybe always had been an, an inherent part of your personality. Yes. Yes. We, we brought a tent and sleeping bags and planned to buy our own, go to the grocery store more often than we were, we would eat out. And we, we hooked up with the youth hostel organization and found out where all the youth hostels were, and those are extremely reasonable places to stay. And so, you know, we found ways to save a lot of money, and a few times we did splurge. We stayed in a nice hotel uh -huh. every now and then. How did you keep track of expenses while you were on the road? Was that difficult to do? Did you worry about making sure you had paper receipts or... And how well, did you, I mean, we, you didn't carry, you know, $8,000 around in your pocket all the time. That would have been, no, that would have been quite dangerous. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. We had travel checks that we, we bought before we left the States and we did convert some money from, and we had Australia dollars on us when we, to make sure that when we got off the plane, if we needed to take a taxi, we could pay in cash with the Australian dollars. And we charged a lot of things. Uh, you know, the visa is so convenient to travel with because it, the banks make the conversion for us. Uh -huh. So uh, there were, being there for two months, we did stop in a bank a couple of times to uh, get some, some more cash. And I believe we did that with the, the traveler's checks. I, I think we cashed out our traveler's checks to get Australian dollars uh -huh. that way. What was your what was your biggest surprise? Oh, and how friendly the Australians are! They absolutely love Americans, and because I I had this false belief that you know I'm I'm just I'm not from there. I don't really know their customs. I I feel really awkward, and yet they were so welcoming, and they loved my accent, which I thought was really funny because <laughs> um, we love theirs. <laughs> yeah, yes, because I, we stayed in the same hotel. The first, the very first night in Sydney, we, we stayed in a hotel, and our very last night was in Sydney to fly home, and we stayed in the same hotel. And there was a someone there that remembered us from two months earlier, and he said, I remember you because I remember your accent. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, oh, that's, that's, no, you're the one with the accent. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah, I just, I felt at home from the first 24 hours I was there. I would, I would live there in a minute if I could. So it's a beautiful country. Now, something I didn't ask you when we've talked in the past is what was it like coming home and going back to your routine? You were no longer working at the postal service at that time. You'd been, you'd been doing your own business. And I know you have a part-time business uh, or part-time a job as well. But what was it like having that... Uh, freedom of movement and now being back home. Oh, it was, very, it was very refreshing to be back home. It really was. I was ready to just settle back into my routine, which actually wasn't really a routine. It was every week was different, knowing because I had four or five clients at the time, and uh, every week was different. And I did have that concern that I would come back and they'd say, "Oh, I couldn't wait. I couldn't wait for you to come back." So I hired somebody else. You know, that was my biggest fear. But I came back, and they were all. All my clients were so happy to see me, and they were so excited to hear about the trip. and And I just picked up right where I left off. It was it was seamless. It was very easy. Mm, that's great. Have you got plans for another grand journey or something else that you were passionate about saving money to do? Uh, not at the moment. I just moved to Charlotte uh, almost a year ago to the day, and. So I'm, I still feel like I'm still settling into a town and getting to know Charlotte. So in a way, I feel like I'm on a very long adventure because I'm still <laughs> learning, learning my way around. And uh, Myrtle Beach is very close. 
Uh, Hilton Head's very close. We have the mountains to the west and the beach to the east, and there's so many day trips to take, and I'm still writing, so I'm really more interested in, in keeping things simple at home and completing my third book and continue to live in the moment as much as as much as humanly possible, as much as I can remember to stay in the moment. Well, I really appreciate you spending uh, some of your time with me today and helping my followers uh, and reminding me also about how simple we can make something like bookkeeping be uh, so we don't avoid it. And that I know you've got clients that you know either avoided bookkeeping or didn't know how to handle it. You've been able to help them. I know I've had clients and definitely friends, and I've been in that position in the past too, where just thinking about bookkeeping, I'm, I like, I'm like you, I loved math. <laughs> and, you know, I grew up with a stepfather uh, and a step grandfather who ran an accounting firm. And my first job at 11 years old was in their accounting firm, helping to copy papers. Uh, so I'm not afraid of numbers, but I so dislike having to handle bookkeeping. And yet, if we keep it simple, we will get it done. can only serve to help us grow our businesses. Is that right? It's so satisfying. Yeah, so satisfying when we do know what's coming in and going out. And it's, it's always my goal that when a client hires me that I save them more money than it costs for them to have me work for them. And it happens every single time. And I'll, I'll point it out to them too. I think that I'll show them where I've saved them more money so that, you know, it's, I call it job security. <laughs> and, and it's also, it's also very true. And it, and just seeing how the peace of mind that they have from knowing the job is getting done, you know, it is saving them money in the long run. Mm-hmm. And you bring up a good point. Um, you work, uh, all your clients are local clients. You work with them. With something like this simple, and you have, you really need that. If this would be a difficult one to do it as simply as you've laid it out and work with, say, a virtual assistant, because you need to have your hands on the actual paperwork. I mean, if, if somebody was going to put it all together for you, they might just as well just do this, do it themselves, right? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, and by... And by going into their office, I can actually find things that they might not have seen before. You know, I can I can find you. That fresh eyes of, did you really mean to spend this much on, on chi- bright, shiny objects this month? You know, or, yeah. you know, if you, I see this uh, payment going out every month, but do you actually use this service? So, and that happens a lot. We pay for things, something that may have interested us a lot early on and we continue to pay but yet not benefit from the service that's a drain on our finances we could be using that money in other ways so i know having fresh eyes like you would bring to a client is really important yes it it is and it's too easy to ignore those automatic payments they may seem small say 9.99 a month but it adds up Mm -hmm. what if there you know there may be a couple of them and it it adds up and it's a simplifying always feels good and it's probably a whisper that they were ignoring like i know i really should take care of that it takes time to dig in and cancel something or you know whatever you know take a good look at it it takes time to look at it but it's worth it in the long run right right and i think the last point you and i could make here goes back to whether you want to handle your own bookkeeping or not and the time involved yeah it may take you a little bit more time getting your system set up but but once it's set up, kind of runs itself. You just throw a little few minutes here and there for it. And if you truly don't like doing it, hire somebody, right? Right, because, yeah, the time freed up could increase your productivity to a point where it more than pays for the extra help. So how would you recommend someone who wants to find a local bookkeeper go about that? I highly recommend word of mouth. You know, there's a saying, when the student is ready, the teacher appears. And I I really believe that when the business owner is ready, the bookkeeper appears. (laughs) Ask around. Talk to your friends. Talk to, you know, there are a lot of college students who who are majoring in accounting and business. And, yeah, you could go to your uh, community college and ask a professor to recommend a trustworthy student because you absolutely have to trust person. Um, even though they may not have the authority to you know, sign your checks or there will be, especially with all this online, there will be access that requires absolute trust in somebody. And I think people sense that with me. I mean, it's a line I, you know, I would never cross. Mm-hmm. It's too sacred and too intimate. Someone allows me into their home to look at the finances. There's some very deep level of trust there. 
So word of mouth is the best way to find somebody. Is there a norm, uh, something we, like if we're thinking of hiring someone and we want to understand what it might cost us, is there is there a dollar figure that would be a norm or an average or just something to get us thinking and planning that would be a good benchmark? Yes, $15 an hour is, I consider, the minimum. And anywhere from 15 to 20 is reasonable. I have several friends in the same business and that's right about where everybody is between 15 and 20 depends on the market Mm -hmm. and again you said early on it's going to take them more hours to get things done but afterwards it does take yes there is an investment up front it doesn't all have to happen at once to go in and spend 20 hours all at once and i recommend five hour chunks of time if it's not something you can come in and do in two hours it takes time to dig in and really see what they're but once the systems are set up then a minimum of five hours of each visit would be sufficient to Mm -hmm. get a lot of work done it could be every other week five hours every other week or you know whatever you can afford but consider you know giving the bookkeeper a solid chunk of time and plus there's travel time is getting to your house you know the discussion of you know where everything is and what's going on and and then dig in to the numbers and it's and it's that digging in is the reason why a lot of people don't do it in the first place right but it's you know it's required the nature of it well you've shared some wonderful things with us today jennifer monahan about home business bookkeeping made simple whether we have a home based business or if it's just our family business because i do know we have some people that may not have started their business yet they're still thinking about it get that system in place at the get-go and you'll save yourself a lot of frustration and grief possible additional costs later on because you miss something uh in reporting yeah and it's a great system to do for your personal finances i do it for my personal this i do my personal exactly the same way i do my business so you can practice on your personal Uh as well start right there and teach the kids to do it if you've got kids at home right my, yeah, my father taught me. That's oh, that's great. Part. All right. Thank you so much. Well, thank it's, you for having me, Kat. Oh, it's my pleasure. We'll have to have you back. Definitely let us know how that new book's coming along. This is Kat Sturz from RockingYourPath.com, reminding you to keep rocking your unique path to success. And join us again next week when I have another great guest on Fast Action Fridays. Bye-bye.